Hi, this is Nick Williford and Manos Berlakis presenting case 289 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of a patient with recurrent failure of a radial graft to the LED. This is the coronary angiogram and this is their radial graft that had multiple stents at the ostium. It kept on reoccluded. And the question is, what can we do next? He does have a flash osteal occlusion of the LAD, and the LAD is filling retrogradely and undergradely through this radial graft. The idea was to open the native LAD. And how can this be achieved? We do have a blunt proximal cap. We have a length of about 22 millimeters based on CT. We do have good quality distal vessel, and this is filling through the radial graft. So we have a nice retrograde access to the distal vessel. Based on that, and because of the flash osteal occlusion, the plan was to try first with a retrograde approach through the graft, and then if that failed, try undergrade wiring potentially using intravascular ultrasound for clarifying the origin of the LED. We engaged the graft with a nail guide and also had a guide extension that was intubated deeply into the radial graft. This is very important for providing strong support. And then we advanced a retrograde Sion black wire to the proximal cap. The wire is been knuckled and is taking a bend. We um, had this wire go into this bend on the top, then on the bottom, then we took another picture through the microcatheter, and now the wire seems to have been going into a small side branch, potentially with some extravasation. So we pulled it back and did the repeat injection. Now it looks like we are into the architecture of the vessel. And then we switched into a Gladius Mongo guide wire that went extra black next to the left main. The problem was that the microcatheter, the retrograde microcatheter, would not advance any further because of probable decalcification. So what to do next? One could use the retrograde wire as a marker for advancing an undergrade wire. And this is what we did. We used a guy on X2 now that we knew where to go, and we tried to um, wire next to the retrograde guide wire, which was challenging. We finally manipulated once again the retrograde guide wire, and the retrograde wire initially seemed to go on the left main, but then eventually went down into the circumflex. So what to do next? Should we just pull it back and try to rewire again, which is not a bad option, or should we do something else? And what we decided here is to snare the retrograde guide wire. So we advanced a 2 by 4 millimeter end snare into the circumflex, and then we advanced the retrograde wire into it, closed the snare, pulled the wire back, and now we have the retrograde wire inside the undergrade guide catheter. And at this point, we were able to change the retrograde microcatheter to the fine cross M3, which we have seen to be very crossable compared with other microcatheters. And this microcatheter successfully advanced inside the undergrade guide catheter. So we externalize the wire, perform balloon angioplasty. There is uh, some undergrade flow going through. We then started to stand from more distal to more proximal, place the first, second stand. There was, uh, at this point, uh, a third stand going all the way from the LED to the left main. But at this point, there was some haziness, some dissection into the proximal circumflex. Most likely, this was the result of using the snare. And this is one of the downsides of using snares into native coronary arteries or bypass graft, which is that they can cause a dissection. So now this changes the dynamics a little bit because uh, we need to make sure we have good flow into the circumflex. So we decided to use a two-stand technique from the LAD and the circumflex. And uh, the technique we chose was the DK crush. The nice thing about the DK crush is you maintain always access to the main vessel, which is the LAD here, which is also important because we do not want to jail the retrograde guide wire. So we place the stent into the circumflex, protruding a little bit into the left main. The um, stent was deployed. It was post-dilated. 
Then the stent uh, was crushed uh, into the left main, followed by a rewiring of the circumflex and the first kissing balloon inflation. We do see nice expansion of the stent. But now, after we did that, we see some contrast extravasation in the LAD. And this was probably the area where our initial attempt to cross retrogradely led us to enter into. So this is probably a small vessel perforation from the knuckled wire getting into there. What to do? Um, we uh, did the kissing balloon inflation and placed a PK papyrus cover stand in that area, which uh, provided a nice result. Fortunately, we didn't have any major um, diagonals or major septals in that area. And now we have nice result with Timothy flow into the LAD and Timothy flow into the circumflex. The problem now was that we had a lot of competitive flow from the radial graft. Although this radial graft kept on failing, at this point it was open and was providing a lot of competitive flow. And we know that when there's much competitive flow, there is a risk of thrombosing the native vessel that we just recanalized. So we ended up uh, coiling it. We placed uh, several penumbra coils. We placed a pod, POD distally, and then uh, a packing coil more proximally, and that uh, successfully occluded the vessel. And this was the final result. We now do not have any longer competitive flow. We see excellent filling of the LAD as well as the diagonal branch. There are several lessons from this case. The first one is when you have a flush osteal occlusion with uh, proximal cap ambiguity, the retrograde approach is an attractive approach if it's technically feasible. In this case, we did have a patent graft to the LAD that was a nice uh, retrograde conduit. Number two, we say trust the knuckle, and this is true, but always verify because the knuckle is not perfectly safe. I think what happened here is that the knuckle likely went into a small branch, likely a small septal, and in cases like this, the knuckle can actually perforate the vessel and cause uh, pericardial bleeding. In this case, we placed a papyrus stand. There was not uh, a large amount of bleeding, but this is always important when knuckling. Knuckling is not 100% safe, one needs to verify that the course of the knuckle is as expected. Number three is about uh, snaring the retrograde guide wire. In this case, the retrograde guide wire entered into the circumflex and we had difficulty redirecting it into the left main. So what we did is we placed a small snare, two by four millimeter and snare into the circumflex and then snare the retrograde guide wire. However, this came at a price and the price was that we dissected the proximal circumflex and had to use a two-stand bifurcation technique. And finally, when there's difficulty crossing with the retrograde microcatheter, one solution is to advance a different microcatheter, and the fine cross M3 that was used in this case seems to be very promising with a very low profile and excellent crossing capacities. Thank you.